guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to run custom code inside of make.com uh, or Zapier actually for free. Uh, so you wanna use this whenever you have some sort of use case where you know it takes multiple steps, you wanna do some data calculation and you can either you know write it out in like a hundred different steps in the automation or you could just write some codes. But as you can see from the title, you don't even have to code. So if it's a little bit more complex and you're thinking like, hey, I wanna save some operations, just make it in code. Uh, and some examples I can give you is, for example, uh, what I use it for is to automate reporting. So every Friday I run a bunch of API calls to, to my outreach software that we use for clients. And then, you know, we uh, basically, you know, make some calculations. For example, we take the total opens and then divide it by the total email sent. And it's like 10 campaigns per client. Like if I would make that all in no code and make, it would be a nightmare. So I've made it in code and then I just trigger it from make.com and then the next steps are all in my automation. So I'll show you exactly how to do it, even if you can't code. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's dive in. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna download Cursor. Uh, so you go to cursor.com, you can download it for free. Um, with the free plan, you can uh, still do quite a bit. And I think for our use case, the free plan will be just enough. Um, if not, you can upgrade, it's only like 20 bucks a month, or you can fill out your own API keys if you have them. So what is Cursor? Cursor is an IDE or, or coding interface if you're not a developer. Um, so basically, you know, in this video, I'll make it stupid simple, like I just recently learned how to code. So, um, you know, I just wanna have this be available for people that don't know how to code. And I wanna use AI to, you know, build out some of the more ad advanced, you know, workflows, so to say. And, uh, you know, for now, this is uh, definitely the best option to do so. And in Cursor, basically what you can do is just, you know, talk to a ChatGPT-like interface and tell them like, hey, this is what I want to code. And it goes from code to J JavaScript or to Python or whatever language. We're going to code in uh, JavaScript and in, in Node uh, because it's easier to then deploy it. Uh, and for deployment, we're going to use Amazon Web Services. So specifically, we're going to use Lambda. So basically what you can do here is you can upload a little code snippet and it will run whenever you say like, hey, run it. You can either do it on interval or you can trigger it. Uh, for our use case, we're going to trigger it because we're going to be triggering it with make.com. Um, so we keep it easy, you know, we just deploy the code here and then whenever we need it, we say in make, like, hey, uh, tell Amazon to run the code and then we'll get back the results or it will run in the background depending on how we set it up. Uh, and this is actually free, okay? So it's, it's free because it has a really generous free tier. Uh, and you know, unless you run a lot of code, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna be paying anything basically. And uh, if even if you do, it's gonna be pennies, and it's gonna be well worth it. So sign up at Amazon AWS, make an account, and then uh, we can go into the next step. All right, guys. So the first step, uh, we're gonna open up Cursor, and we're gonna write the code we want to write. Um, so you want to make a folder just on your desktop. Uh, it's the easiest, and just name it whatever you want to call your function. Um, and then you can click on Open Folder and then just navigate to that folder. So for me, it's cursor video and it's just an empty folder. And then we have to run uh, some commands to basically set up the project, okay? So if you wanna download these exact commands so you can just copy paste them, uh, you can sign up with the link in the description and you know, you'll get access to, you'll get access to my Notion page, which basically has like for every video, it has resources and anything you can download. And for now it's completely free. So uh, you might as well take advantage while it's free. Um, so you can download that in the description below, or you can just go along with this video. That's fine, of course, as well. So what we want to do here is we want to say terminal and then create a new terminal. So we just open the terminal and then we're going to run our first commands. So the first command is going to initialize a node.js project. Um, so node is, I think, the runtime it, it means. So basically the way we're running the JavaScript. Again, I'm, I'm very new to this as well. So I want to keep it simple, but basically that's what we're doing here. Um, and then it will create, <clears throat> it will just create a, the project as well as with like a packages.json file. And then, the, yeah, basically we are uh, good to go. And then the second thing we want to do is actually do the npm install AWS SDK. So this is basically installing a package. And that means that basically we get a lot of like pre-written code and things we can use. Uh, and the AWS SDK is so that we can de deploy it to Lambda uh, on Amazon Web Services, which we talked about before. So we can just run that and then it will uh, install it for us. So we just have to wait a, bit, a couple of seconds. All right, cool. And now you can see actually also here now Node modules popped up and it has a bunch of stuff in here, which we don't have to do anything with, uh, but that's basically just, you know, to have that Amazon package installed. 
And now this is where the magic happens, right? Because I, I, I promised you guys at the beginning of the video, you don't have to be able to code for this. You can actually just have AI uh, write it off for you. Um, so what we can do here is just hit Command I, and what we'll get is this little pop-up uh, that I actually make uh, smaller, which is the control panel. And this is basically the composer. So in here, we can just write anything and it will start writing it for us, okay? So we can have really detailed prompts if you wanna do a lot of stuff. Uh, or we can have some more simple prompts. So, so for this video, I'm actually gonna keep it fairly simple. We're just gonna pass a variable from make.com into the code. And we're gonna just do a simple calculation on the code and then give the variable back. I think this is the best example because when I get into like super niche examples, it's not really that relevant. Uh, but if you can pass a variable to the code, have it compute something and then return a variable, they'll basically act as like building blocks uh, for all further you know, use cases you use this for. Um, so yeah, let's actually just do that. So what I'm gonna write here is as follows. All right, so my prompt is super simple. Write me a lambda function. So we give it a context that we're trying to write lambda functions uh, in index.js. So we need this to be the file name so that lambda knows what to run. Okay, so this has to be this uh, name. Um, and then um, in node.js, so that's basically like the runtime thing I talked about, uh, that takes in an event variable. So you want to call it this because basically whenever you start a Lambda function, it's called like an event. If you want to pass a variable into your code, you're going to want to call it like an event variable. I named the event variable number, and then we multiply by 10, and then we return back the variable as output. So it's super simple. I'm just going to hit enter, and let's see what happens. All right, so as you can see, it just wrote the code. So it says async event. We're going to listen to that. We're going to get the number. Uh, we're gonna multiply the number by 10 and then we're gonna return it with a status code 200 and then we're gonna output the result, all right? So accept all. And then if we close this, what we're actually gonna see is that now we have an extra file here named index.js exactly as we want it and it already contains the code. So it actually made all of these uh, changes for us automatically, right? So when we click accept on the AI edits, it actually edits this for us. So there's no copy pasting between ChatGPT and Claude or whatever, it's all done inside here. Uh, and also if you're gonna do a bit more advanced things, um, you can just select this for example, and then you can hit Command K. You can actually get another option. Um, let me actually, uh, let's move this. Uh, so you get another option to just prompt this. So I said, in, let's say I wanna not multiply by 10, but I wanna multiply by 100. Obviously I could just, you know, do this. Um, but you know, let's, let's just, just as an example, you know, let the AI change it. Uh, so I say, uh, don't multiply by 10, but by 100. And then as you can see, it will just go through each of the lines of the code. And then, you know, it will catch, you know, what you want to change. And then you can just click accept and it changed it. So again, obviously super simple example. Uh, but if you're doing a bit more advanced workflows, you can still just, you know, prompt it like this. And that way, you know, you can literally make coding changes without ever knowing how to code or you could just ask it the same way in the, in this chat window as well and then even if you just want to ask it something so let's say you don't want to make an edit right away but you want to for example you wanted to explain the code to you if you can't code and you're like okay i want to check if this is actually correct you can do command l or control l i think on uh, windows and then here you can just ask it anything so i can say eli5 so explain it like i'm five this code and then it has the context of the file we have. And then, sure, I'll explain the codes. And then someone gives you the number, blah, 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 right? And it's, it's super good, right? So it uh, can explain the code to me uh, very easily. And, you know, once your code base expands, so if you have, like, uh, let's say, uh, 200 lines of code, you can still do this, and it can still very easily explain it to you. So you can make sure, uh, you know, the AI did it correctly, All right? And then when we're ready to deploy the code, so if you're happy with the code, uh, it, it seems okay. You want to start testing it on Lambda, see if it actually works. Um, what you can do is just uh, run another command. So it's going to be this command to zip together the uh, node modules and the index file. And then, and as you can see right now, the function.zip appeared. And with this file, we're actually gonna go into Lambda uh, and uh, you know upload it and test it out. All right, so like I said before, you have to make an AWS account uh, so you can actually deploy the code onto a server and then uh, run it whenever we need to. Um, so, you know, Amazon uh, AWS, and as you can see, right, like that's the free tier. Let's actually look, at, look it up exactly. So we can do 1 million free requests per month. So I don't think you guys are gonna use that much. So yeah, that's amazing. 
uh, and it will always be free, right? So it's not even the first year, it's no free trial, it's always 1 million free requests per month, which is just amazing. So yeah, basically once you set up the account, you go inside of your account and then here in the search function, you can just type Lambda, click on it, and then basically you will have the uh, Lambda interface. Now what we're gonna do is very simple. We're just gonna say create a function. Um, we're gonna call a function name. So I'm just gonna call it demo video, demo account contain spaces. So demo video, um, let's see anything else. That's all good. So we're gonna create the function and then you can see some code pop up here. Um, but what we're gonna do is very simple. We're just gonna click here on upload from a zip file. We're just gonna select the zip file we created before, save it. All right, and then as you can see, it all is up and running. So we actually can't see the code source uh, because we included all of other files that it needed, right? Um, but what we can do is we can test it out. And this is gonna be important because Obviously my function is super simple just for this video purposes. But in your case, it's very likely that you'll run into an issue. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a test event and you're gonna look at the logs. And if there's any issue, you're literally just gonna copy paste it and give it back uh, to you know, control I or command I in the cursor interface we were just in. And it will start debugging it for you and I'll just re-upload it. And you can go through a couple of cycles like this until it's fixed. Obviously, if you can code a little bit and read it a little bit, it helps with the AI. It's the same way, uh, you know, when you're asking ChatGPT to write a blog, if you know to ask the right questions, it will always be better. Still, it's like 90% of the case, it's correct, right? It's really good. So here in the test setting, so in my case, uh, we obviously created a variable that was called, let me check again. We called it, uh, it number. So the key is going to be number and we have to give it a value. Uh, so let's just give it a value of one. And then the output should be uh, one multiplied by a thousand, so a thousand, all right? So let's test it out. As you can see, it's successful, and the output is 10, which is very weird. All right, so the output is actually 10 because we didn't save the file, so it's actually pretty funny. Uh, but make sure to regularly hit Control S or Command S if you're on Mac uh, <laughs> whenever you're doing the file, and especially before you zip it, because otherwise it didn't do the update. So it just multiplied by 10. But yeah, it's successful. So so before we actually dive into triggering this inside of make.com, I just quickly want to give you some guidelines as to what to do when you get any sort of errors. And so first of all, if the top of your code uh, contains a little dot, it means it's not saved. Uh, so you want to hit save. That's the exact mistake I just made, right? So it didn't multiply by a thousand, but just by uh, 10. The other thing is if the top of your code includes any sort of thing like import or whatever. So when you have any sort of import statement like this at the top, so I just made an example, uh, it means that your code used an external library that you have to install before you upload it into, before you upload it into Lambda. So really quickly how you would install, for example, this one is very simply, you just say npm install and then the package name. And as you can see, it will start running and it will start installing it inside of the node modules thing that we have here. Uh, and basically you have nothing to worry about. So that's one of the things you have to keep in mind uh, when kind of debugging those things. And then another tip I have is uh, to do a command K on your entire code. So whenever you get any sort of error, uh, make sure to do a command K and say, add as many console.logs for debugging as possible. So what this will do is it will just do a bunch of print statements or console.log statements, which means, you know, um, extracted the number, calculated the result, you know, preparing the response. It basically just walks you through in like natural language after every step what it's done. So you can very easily catch any sort of mistakes and where they are in the process. So this makes it easier to then, you know, go back to Lambda, run it again, and then just get in like natural language uh, response as to just getting more insights basically into like debugging the code and knowing, you know, what to do and what to fix. And also you can, again, you can just select this and then ask your instructions. If you do command I, control I, and just say like, hey, I got this error. You say like, hey, I got this error. Then you paste in like the bunch of codes, whatever it is, as much context as you can give it. You don't have to format it nicely at all. And just say, fix it. And it'll literally start running. And you can do a couple of like rotations like this. And uh, you know, you should get your code working fairly easily. All right guys, so final step, obviously how to then trigger this code inside of make.com because that's where you came uh, to this video, right? How to run code inside of make.com. So simply if we go to scenarios, we create a new scenario and then we can just simply select Lambda, okay? So it's just in here as a standard trigger and we can say run a function or invoke, I think they call it. Yeah, invoke function. 
we have to create a connection actually because I didn't do that yet. So you have to create a connection. Um, so you know, just give it a name and then your AWS key and AWS secret key you have to get. And then also make sure to take a look at your region, okay, where you're in. Um, so yeah, let me walk you through that. So when you go back to Lambda, you can actually see at the top right what region you're in. So I'm in the Frankfurt region. It usually auto assigns it whenever you sign up. Um, the one that's closest to you. All right, and then to get your like API keys to link it together, it is done with inside of uh, IAM, so the Identity and Access Management Console. So this one is actually a little bit complicated because it's really like enterprise focused. So, you know, big companies, they can give very specific permissions to different sort of users. So yeah, just go to users, you click create user, and then you can say make uh, or make.com, whatever go next and then unless you know you have this all set up you can just say attach policies directly and then we're going to search for lambda and then you want to select this one so lambda full access and then you want to click next and then you want to say create user and then you want to go to that user and then you want to go to security credentials and you want to say create access key and then, you know, you have to say, you know, what you're going to use it for. Um, so it's going to be third party application. I'm going to say next. And you want to say create access key. And then as you can see, you'll get an access key and you will get the secret access key as well. So you just copy this. And then the next one, I'm obviously going to blur out. Make sure the region matches and hit save. And then as you can see, you can now select your function. So I have this one, the demo video. And then you have the invocation type. So for invocation type, you have three options and they're also, you know, descriptive down here. So either you can request a response. In our case, this is what we need because we want to give it the number and then get the number back. But you could also do an event, which you just invoke the function and then it starts running and it just says, okay, I started it. And then, you know, your make automation will also continue to the next step. Uh, or a dry run, which I don't think is relevant for us, uh, you know, just to test if it works. So in our case, we're gonna do a request response and then we have to uh, write out some JSON. So obviously we're pretty lazy. So we're just gonna uh, do this with ChatGPT. Um, so very easily you just prompt ChatGPT and you say like, write me JSON with the key being in our case number and the value uh, being let's say 10. And then you can just copy it from ChatGPT and then hit OK. And then let's just run it and see what happens. All right, so now we've run the module and as you can see, the output status code is 200 and then the body, it says output is 100. So it's basically a variable that has a value of 100. So a variable named output that has a value of 100. So how can we actually use this in the next step? Um, so you just wanna add in a JSON, parse JSON module here and then take the JSON string from body. And then what you wanna do uh, is let's say we want to send a Slack message in the next step. We want to create a Slack message, but as you can see, we cannot really select uh, the JSON yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to run it once and then see what happens. And then if we click again, we now have the variable here separated and it should just give us 100 as a variable. So let's run it one more time, save this, run it one more time. And then as you can see the message that was sent, it just says 100 and it's 100% correct. So it does exactly what we want. We give it input, it gives us output and we can use it in the rest of our automation. So that's it. Now you can run custom code inside of make.com by setting up a simple Lambda function and you can use it with cursor. So you don't have to know how to code and you can do it 100% automatically. So if you want to have the step-by-step -step plan I use, some of the commands I used, my prompt I used, make sure to download the resources in the link of the description. You can also get access to all of the other resources from other videos. And if you like this content, make sure to leave a like, a comment. And if you have any sort of use case you would like to see automated, feel free to leave a comment. I really like the input I'm getting from people to you know, determine what the next build will be. So if you have anything you've been trying to automate, just leave a comment down below and I consider it for a next video. And for now, I'll see you all in the next one.